Okay, so you're here because you're looking for the best pre-emergent strategy out there in the game today. And I'm gonna be honest with you, this information you're gonna hear is probably gonna be the first time you heard it because it's not that common knowledge. Not a lot of people know about it, but that's fine. That's why you're here on Turf Therapy. We're gonna take care of you, man. Bring you in and get you spun up on this because it's good information. And thank you for the professional that chooses to rename nameless, but I appreciate you, you know who you are. And thank you for the We Working team for helping me put this together into a digestible form of content. Now, if you want the answer, it's simple. Prodiamine and sulfentrazone. Take prodiamine, you take sulfentrazone, you add them together, voila, you got your magic dust that you need to sprinkle over the lawn and have a very effective and powerful pre-emergent and post-emergent application. But if you wanna know the why, you wanna understand how it's working, why it's better than just not applying by itself, then uh, stick around, I got you. So let's start out the one we're most familiar with for the most part, and it's prodiamine. It's a group three herbicide that once the weeds germinate, it uh, prunes the roots. That's essentially what it's doing. Streamlining is as much as possible. Prunes the roots, clubs the roots. You'll hear those two terms. And all that means is once the weed seed germinates, it's not, a, it's not able to develop a root structure like it should be to support a healthy plant. Now, it's labeled for some grassy weeds, crabgrass, goosegrass, poanula, and then is labeled for broadleaf weed control as well. And um, that's pretty much the gist of it. And it lasts a really long time. And I'm harping on prodiamine because it's it's my favorite, right? Pendamethalin, Scott's Holtz brand, that stuff costs like $100 a bag right now, insane. And Dithia Pier, although it's cool, um, and it comes in hot and fast, and you got your pre and post emergent effect with Dithia Pier, or Dithia Pier, however you wanna to refer to it, it does not last as long. So you're trading off like that length of time and then you'll easily reach your yearly, like your annual limit. So not my preferred mode of action. But prodiamine, we got a really long residual uh, effect on it. But the problem is it's not that effective when it comes to our um, broadleaf weeds. Uh, not as well as you would think it would be. There's plenty of breakthrough and breakout when you're using this product. And another thing is if you're not using the middle rate, at least that one pound per acre rate, it's not that effective on pole annual grass. And you actually have to jump all the way up to the highest rate to get the effectiveness for goose grass. None of this stuff is really on the label. This is the information I'm getting from the professionals that's worked out in the fields and has met with these different companies that you know have done the studies. And they're out there if you wanna go find them. But but made it easy, I'm bringing it to you. So that's prodiamine in a, in a nutshell, right? And then when it comes to sulfentrazone, sulfentrazone is a group 14 herbicide. And what that means is the mode of action that it's using to kill these weeds and non desirable grasses is it's bleaching it out, right? Almost keeping it from developing its chlorophyll. And so now you have Two different modes of action that's working in unison to get the achieve uh, effects that you want and both of these are not only um well so fincher zone is foliar um a foliar activated it can be uptaken uptaken through the foliage and it's in the soil as well then prodiamine that's just a solar feed kind of kind of thing so both of these combined gives you like your ultimate post and pre-emergent program. It's like you got the best of both worlds when it comes to Dithia Pier in the long range game of prodiamine. Now you might be asking like, what is the application rate? How do you need to do it? It's cool, let's go over it. Now, when you look at the prodiamine rate, I already kind of hinted towards you, unless you're at the like one pound per acre rate or more, you're not really going to achieve that POA annual prevention that you're looking for. And if you're in the cool season zone, you don't need eight months of coverage to take care of the goose grass. So we're gonna do everything kind of based off that one pound per acre rate just because it makes sense. Now with that, you may be looking at it like, hey, that's the one pound per acre rate. What does that mean? They don't have it in this little table one chart down here. They just got the range and I got you. What you wanna do is translate uh, or convert. You wanna convert one pound to grams. 
And you want to convert it to grams because it's an easier unit of measurement to work with when you're about to break it down. Now we know there's 43,560 square feet in one acre. So what you're going to want to do is once you convert one pound to grams, which is like 456 or something like that, I'll throw it up here on the screen and you're going to divide that by the 43.5. Then you should come out with uh, 10.5 grams. Uh, that's your application rate now, your annual application rate for prodiamine per thousand square feet. So you're going to split that up for split applications. You'll do the first application when your soil temps reach about 50 degrees, throw your first five grams out there per thousand square feet. And then you're going to come back when the soil temperatures reach 65 degrees and you'll put your second application of prodiamine uh, out there and then you're good. Now you got your prodiamine coverage at somewhere around five to six months of coverage, which is perfect when you're starting to around March and April because you'll be ready for overseeds and uh, whatnot come the fall, early, uh, late summer, early fall, around August. All right, let's take a look at sulfenture zone. Now, the sulfenture zone application rates are four to eight ounces per acre for your cool season grass. And then for your warm season grass, it's eight to 12 ounces per acre. Now we want to go ahead and just focus with the four ounce rate. And I, we're going to have to do the conversion just like we did. Now it's different because we're dealing with fluid ounces. So what we're going to want to do is convert the four fluid ounces to milliliters. That gives us 118 milliliters. Then you're going to divide that 118 milliliters by 43.5 because we are still working with that acreage and that we want to convert to your basic 1000 square feet. That's going to give us the 2.7 milliliters. And that 2.7 milliliters is your application rate at the thousand square foot unit rate. So your application rate now is 2.7 milliliters per thousand square feet. Really simple, right? Well, maybe not if you don't deal with milliliters. So 2.7 milliliters equals a half a teaspoon. Boom. I gave you all the math that you need. Now you might be looking like, oh, okay. So for eight fluid ounce rate, I just need to double that. And that's right. You just end up with one teaspoon, but let's not do that because sulfentrazone has a cap of 12 fluid ounces per acre at your annual rate. And the way that we want to get the best bang for our buck for sulfentrazone combined with prodiamine is split the applications just like we do with the prodiamine. So for your first application, you want to go out with that half a teaspoon with the correlating amount that you need for prodiamine. Then the second application, when you hit that 65 degree mark, when that's most likely when your sedges are showing up anyway, then we hit it with another four ounce rate, which is another half teaspoon for per thousand square feet. And you'll be good. That'll give you 60 days of coverage and you'll be in a good place. It'll smoke out those sedges and we'll still give you the residual pre-emergent effects that we want to have the best pre-emergent strategy this season. And that's it. So using these two different modes of action combined with the proper rates and using it properly is going to have you set up for success. Now, for those people that may have a product that has sulfur zone in it, like uh, triad select or T zone SC, that already has sulfur zone in it. It's worth mentioning that those rates that's mixed into those bottles are more at like the one to two ounce rate meaning you're not going to get the pre-emergent effect that you're looking for. So don't think that you can supplement with a three-way blend that has sulfur zone in it because you're still not getting that four ounce per acre rate, which we converted down to a half a teaspoon per thousand square feet rate that you need to get that proper coverage. Now, I know that this was a lot, but I've made it as simple as I can. I really want you to take this information and do wondrous things with it this season. So watch this video as many times as you need to and share it with a friend or family member that you know can benefit from this information. I thank you for checking out the video. Again, I hope that it was a blessing for you. And I wrap this one up. I'll check you next time. Peace.